If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer this question first on your own before listening on. To understand part A, we have to remember that the electric potential produced by a point charge is equal to a constant times the value of the charge divided by the distance from the charge to whichever point we're examining. So we're going to actually do three calculations here. We need to figure out the electric potential for x's between negative 1.5 and 0, and then for x's from 0 to 1.2, and then for x's that are greater than 1.2. Let's start for x's that are somewhere between negative 1.5 and 0. So we're looking at this point right here, and since the distance has been marked x from the origin to point p, we can call a similar distance along the negative x direction negative x. So the total electric potential at this point here would be the sum of the two potentials that these charges are producing. So we could say v negative plus v positive. And for the negative charge, we're going to have the constant multiplied by the value of the charge, which is negative 5 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, divided by the distance from that charge to this point, which we can see from the diagram is negative x. And then we're going to add that to the potential produced by the positive charge, which is the constant times the amount of charge on that positive charge divided by the distance from that charge to this point. Now, that distance would have to be the distance 1.2 added to the distance marked negative x. So that would be 1.2 minus x. And to simplify it a little bit, we could say that the total potential is equal to the following. Since we have a k and a times 10 to the minus 9, we can factor that out. So we're going to have k times 10 to the negative 9 and then that's going to be multiplied by negative 5 over negative x plus 2.5 over 1.2 minus x. So this would be the function that gives the electric potential for points that lie from negative 1.5 all the way up to 0. Now we need to come up with an equation for x values between a distance of 0 to 1.2. And so the total potential in that region is once again going to be the sum of the two electric potentials. So we're going to have k times the negative charge divided by the distance from that charge to any point that is between 0 and 1.2. We can see that we've marked that point as point p, and the distance, therefore, is just this distance x. And then we're going to add that to k multiplied by the positive charge divided by the distance from that positive charge to this point. Now that distance would be represented by 1.2 minus x. As before, we could factor out a k times 10 to the minus 9, and that's going to leave behind negative 5 over x plus 2.5 over 1.2 minus x. So this equation would give the total potential anywhere between the origin and the distance of 1.2. So we can put that domain beneath that function. And we'll do one more for an arbitrary point that we've selected over here. So the total potential at that point is, once again, k times the negative charge divided by the distance from that negative charge to that point, which we have marked as x, plus k times the positive charge divided by the distance from the positive charge to this blue point right here. Now that distance will not be x because it would be just from here to here. So that's actually going to be the distance x minus 1.2. That would give this distance right here. And we'll simplify it in a similar way as we've done before. And this equation is valid from distances of 1.2 all the way up to 1.5 since that's the maximum distance that they want us to gra uh, graph along. So that distance right there would be 1.5. We can put that domain right here. Now what you can do is grab your calculator, a graphing calculator, and type in each of these three functions and examine what the graphs look like. It might be a bit complicated because you're going to have to adjust the viewing windows and so on. But if we graph these three functions for their respective domains, don't forget that the domains are restricted for each of these functions, we would obtain the following graph. And you might want to pause the video and just make sure that each of your three functions match 
the shape that's portrayed on the screen here. So this curve right here would be for the first function that was in black, and then this function, or this curve right here, excuse me, would be the curve for the function that we did in red, and then this is the function that was in blue. Now technically we've already answered part B, which wants a symbolic expression for the potential on the x-axis at an arbitrary point P. Notice that P is located from an x value of 0 to an x value of 1.2. That would correspond to the function that we outlined in red. So this is the symbolic expression. It might be able to be cleaned up a little bit because K, we can actually plug in the value, which is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Newton times meters squared over Coulomb squared. So that's the value of k. And then we had multiplied that by 10 to the negative 9. This should say 10 to the negative 9, not negative 10 to the negative 9. And what's interesting there, when we multiply by 10 to the negative 9, that's going to cancel with the 10 to the positive 9. And then we're multiplying by negative 5 over x plus 2.5 over 1.2 minus x. And the unit in the brackets there would be a unit of charge divided by a unit of distance. So this would be one way to represent a symbolic expression, and therefore this is the correct answer to part B. For part C, all we have to do is plug in 0.6 into this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you do that, you should get approximately negative 37.5. And since everything was in the standard units, the unit will come out in volts. So this is the correct answer to part C. And finally, part D, find the point along the x-axis between the two charges where the electric potential is zero. So we can set this expression for the electric potential between the two charges equal to zero and then try to solve for x. We could divide out the 8.99 on both sides of the equation. The right side will remain zero. We could then add 5 over x to both sides of the equation so that it cancels out on the left. We could then cross multiply, so 2.5 times x which gives us 2.5x, and then we would have 5 times 1.2 minus x. We could divide both sides by 5, so those 5's cancel. 2.5 divided by 5 is 0.5, so we have 0.5x is equal to 1.2 minus x. Let's add x over to the other side so that we get 1.5x equals 1.2, and then divide both sides by 1.5. And when you do that, you get exactly 0.8 meters. And so this is the correct answer to part D.